Hi everyone, Phil Pendlebury here. Welcome back and I hope you're having a super mega large day. Here we are once again on the Steinberg Nuendo channel where I have my own little section. Last month we looked at ARA in detail and this month we've got a two-part video series again which we're going to look at the free plugins that are included with Nuendo 13. There's a lot you can do with these plugins, uh, so that's why I'm going to break it up into two sections, but we're going to go straight into practical examples. Um, a lot of this stuff not available in other DAWs, or maybe it would be available, but you would have to pay for it. With Nuendo, these tools all come as part of Nuendo 13. I've got a project open here that features a couple of the integrated free plugins. And the first one I'd like to have a look at is Doppler. Very useful for sound design. I've got a little video here uh, that I'd like to show you very quickly. It's only, you know, a few seconds long, I mean a minute long or so. And uh, then I'll show you how this was all put together using Doppler. Okay, and one more time. So, first of all, we've got a video that has no sound. And in order to build up the sound of that, we have done some sound design. So if I hide the video here, you can see there are some tracks there that are my basic sound design. There's only a few tracks and we'll quickly go through them. So the first thing we've got is a sound of a car on the road. And that is just a standard sound design with a fade in and a fade out. The second thing we've got, this is where the car um, goes over the speed ramp. So you can hear there's a couple of little screeches. Okay, so here's the car engine. All right, so it's just a straightforward engine sound and it wasn't long enough, so I had to crossfade it a couple of times as well. And then in the background, we have some atmosphere. Right, so let's have a last listen to that without any Doppler applied. Very, very unrealistic. So let's bring up the mixer and see how that was put together very briefly, and then we'll open Doppler and you'll see how it works. And here are the four channels that are involved in that. So we've got the sound of the car on the road, we've got the ramp, we've got the car engine itself, which is the big sound that sounds like a washing machine. This one here. And we've got the car Atmos, or the basic background. So if we look at the routing here, you can see that everything is actually going to the main outs. The car ramp is panned slightly to the left because you know that's where it is on the video. The sound of the car on the road, well, you might think that should be grouped and sent to the Doppler channel, the same as the car engine. But no, and why is that? Because the sound of the road doesn't change when it moves past you. The road itself is not moving, it's the car that's moving. So moving on, and the Atmos is going to a group of its own. So the important one here is the car engine sound. So let's bring up our Doppler, which the car engine sound is routed to, and see how that works. So let's make sure it's sounding right. Cool. OK, so we've got two main settings here. We've got manual and automatic mode. And in manual mode, as you can see, as we move the control around,
everything happens manually. So you can automate that and you could actually, you know, draw in your own style of Doppler effect. Um, the other controls also, you know, will have an effect there. So let's maybe just quickly listen to that. So that was the pitch, obviously the transition, we can make it longer, have a quick listen to that. All very drastic, works quite well, um, the pitch if you're using it on something that's going faster maybe, but in our case we didn't need it to be that extreme. And then of course we have the depth and you can hear that it's barely audible there because it's the actual distance from the front as it were and then of course we have the overall left and right distance okay so let's reset that and we'll go to automatic mode so how does that work well it's quite simple we'll select the left side of the car itself when it first appears and we'll click start and we'll go all the way to the end where it's just about to disappear which is there and we'll click end then we'll find again if we bring up the video here we'll find the position of the listener which is right there hope this makes sense so we'll click that so the, the listener position is basically where the camera is standing and then the transition itself let's just leave that roughly where it is and we can adjust that however we feel. So this is automatic mode, let's have a listen. And now for the adjustments. The pitch needs to be nowhere near as much as that, so we'll lower that down a little bit. Maybe a little bit more. And of course we do have the depth a little bit of that and there is the pan of everything so put that all the way over to a hundred not bad so what I'll do now I'll quickly just load up the plugin preset that I made for how everything was previously and let's have another listen And as you can hear, we've got a nice smooth transition now right in front of the listener from left to right. Notice that the left and right distance is all the way over. And we'll compare that on and off. See the volume difference there? So basically what we're doing with left right distance is we are increasing the volume in the distance. So if we leave it at zero, see the volume doesn't change. If we have it at 100, it fades in nicely. And voila. Uh, and of course, the panorama, as I said earlier, is the overall panning. So that's the Doppler. Now what we need to do is just quickly add in the other things. So the ramp, which doesn't move the road which doesn't move because it's the car that's moving, not the road, and the background atmosphere. Bring up the video again. Let's make it up to half size, put it in the center so you can see it, and a final listen. Without. So as you can see and hear there, Doppler, very useful for working with moving objects. The transition from one side of the screen to the other, or even from the front to the back and so on, you'll get a nice realistic sound effect without having to mess around too much. Um, so I hope that helps and let's move on to our next one.
So once again, we have a little test video and this one's going to be very quick because it does a very simple job, but very, very useful. And this is Randomizer. So have a quick look at the video. It's only for a bit of fun, so nothing super serious. You can see it's um, picture or footage of a hammer hitting an anvil uh, or hitting some metal on an anvil. And once again, video had no sound. Have a quick listen. Okay, so what's going on there? Well, obviously a bit of fun, really. Uh, we've got two sounds. We've got a dog bark and a um, hammer, which was the kind of realistic one. So have another listen to the hammer. And what does randomizer do to both of those sounds? Well, once again, there was a lot of lining up involved, but if we just quickly remove the video and if we quickly disable the randomizer on both of those tracks, let's zoom in so that you can see the actual sounds here. And let's have a listen to the wolf without any randomizer on it. As you can hear, it's exactly the same sound every single time. And the problem with that, things like that is it just doesn't sound very realistic. Obviously, a dog barking uh, when a hammer hits an anvil isn't realistic at all, but I just thought it was another good example. But, but let's bring up the randomizer and see how it works. So we'll put it on the hammer sound, we'll bring it up, and let's just show you what randomizer does. So if I loop around that, let's have a listen. So pitch will be the amount of pitch that is randomized. Once again, very extreme. Obviously that sounds ridiculous on the hammer. Um, the impact. It kind of adds a little bit of a, a transient if you keep it closer to the beginning. Or should I say, really, it takes away some of the transient. And I like to keep that quite low down. We've got colour. So that's more of a tonal thing. Again, don't really want to affect the tone too much here. And then, of course, timing. Well, you can hear. That's gone all over the place because we don't want to affect the timing at all in our case because we've already timed it so that all these hits happen in the correct place. So in our case, really, what we're looking at is maybe a little bit of tonal change when the hammer hits and a very subtle amount of pitch. And as you can hear that every time we play that, it is random. And uh, the same thing with the dog. Let's just quickly see what we did with the dog. The pitch was a little bit more extreme. There was no impact change. There was a more of a color change. Have a quick listen. So I'll bring up the video. We've got randomizer set how we liked it. And let's have a quick listen. So randomizer, again, one of those things, especially for game audio, you should find that very useful. If you've got assets, particular sounds, gunshots, and so on and so forth, that are the same sample you can add a little bit more realism to those, especially when it's buried underneath other things, you know? Okay, let's move on. So as a final little uh, add-on to this, I thought I would quickly show you Post Filter, which is another one of the exclusive plugins to New Endo 13. Let's have a quick look. We'll listen to a voice. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. And we've got a really nice um, low cut and high cut filter. So you know what those do. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording a lot. But the other nice thing um, with the 
post filter is this little notch frequency area. As you can see, we've got a notch there. Let's just get rid of that. Um, and you can actually set the frequency of the notch filter. You can use musical notes to do that as well. So let's say, for example, let's just pull that one up and put a little bit of Q. And let's say, you know, we were working on music, for example. Uh, if I type A3 into there, that will give you 440 hertz. So that little area of the filter now is set to A. If we actually play the voice, hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. You can hear that it's actually almost playing. Let's put that back to 440 because I moved it. And it's almost playing, you know, a musical note out of the voice there. Hello, can I help you? Especially if we add the other notches, which are all part of that. So when you enter a note value, you can actually enter a center offset as well. So you could enter A4 plus 23 or whatever. Let's have a quick listen. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. So there's really not much to say on this. It's high cut, it's low cut, and you can change the cutoff so we can make it more subtle. Hello, can I help you? Hmm, no problem. As, as you can see, we're not really going to worry about listening. And the other useful little thing here is if you're looking at this to try and detect resonances, we can kind of find our resonant areas like this. You can detect the resonances and then you can simply hit the invert button and everything will be inverted, which is a very similar thing to just actually doing that or changing the gain. So there we have Doppler, randomizer and post filter. And that concludes part one. I hope this all made sense to you. I'm trying to move through things quite quickly and obviously putting in some other little bits of detail as well. Don't forget, if you do have any questions or comments, suggestions, etc., please do leave them uh, in the comments section. And of course, like, subscribe would be really helpful too. Thanks ever so much for joining us. And in the next part of this video, we're going to have a look at some voice design stuff. So we'll be using voice designer, pitch driver, and a couple of other little things as well. See you soon. Thanks ever so much indeed.